All right, we are on the last of our polynomial discussion. We're going to talk about polynomial functions. This comes from throughout chapter five. So um, you may need to look around depending on what the problems are. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what we got. Okay, so let's just review some of our basic features of functions and what we're going to get when we talk about polynomial functions. So recall the domain. This is all of the inputs or the x coordinates. When we talk about domain of polynomial functions, it doesn't matter what kind of polynomial function it is. Our domain is always all real numbers or negative infinity to infinity. Our range remember is all the outputs or the y-coordinates. For polynomial functions we have two different categories. If the degree of the function is odd, the range is all real numbers or negative infinity to infinity. Now recall the degree, this is the exponent of the leading term or the largest exponent. So this is the easy one. You don't have to look at the graph in order to find it. And we'll see what a graph of an odd function looks like in a few minutes. Now, if the degree of the function is even, you need to be able to find the minimum or maximum. Um, we'll see why in just a minute. Um, for now, we need to be able to see the graph. The last thing we're going to have is function notation. Remember that if the number is inside the parentheses, if it's inside the parentheses, then we replace x with the number and simplify. If the number is on the other side of the equal sign, then remember to replace the function name with the value, and we're going to have to solve for x. So we'll see some examples of these in a few minutes. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive into what polynomial functions look like, and then we'll go ahead and look at some equations as well. Okay, so the first thing that I want to point out is, uh, for this one, this is an even function, or this has a even degree. And an even degree, what we will always have is on each end, they're both going to be going the same direction. So notice both of these are going up. That tells me that this is an even function or has an even degree. Okay, so let's go ahead and review some things that we've got here. The first thing we want is we want to estimate g of 1. As 1 is inside our parentheses, remember that this is an x-coordinate. So if we come over to where x equals 1, I want to figure out how far down it goes. And to me, I'm going to say negative 3. That is the corresponding y-values. Okay, let's determine the values of x for which g of x equals negative 2. This one, we have negative 2 is on the other side of the equal sign. This is a y-coordinate. So if we come over to where y is negative 2, I'm going to say my first one is probably about 0.5. But we also have another one. If we keep going over, we're about right here. And I'm going to say maybe about 1.8. These are estimates. But we have those two. All right. Next thing we want is the domain of g of x. Our domain, remember, it is a polynomial function. It is all real numbers or negative infinity to infinity. 
We can also look at our graph. Notice that this arrow is going to go forever to the left. This one goes forever to the right. Okay, our range. Remember when we look at graphs, we're going to go bottom to top. So my bottom value is right here. I'm going to say that's about negative 3, and it is equal to negative 3, so I'm going to put that in brackets. And how far up do we go? Well, we do have these arrows here that go forever up. So this is going to be negative 3 to infinity. All right, next question. We want to determine the vertical intercept in point form. So vertical intercept, that's another term for a y-intercept. It means where does it intersect the vertical axis? And we are intersecting right here. So in point form, what is my x-coordinate? It is 0. And my y-coordinate is negative 1. And finally, the zeros for the function. This is where is g of x equal to 0? Remember that this means we are looking for x-intercepts. And we just want to keep the numbers. Notice it doesn't say in point form. It just says when is it going to equal 0. And so we have it equals 0 at negative 2, negative 1, and 2. Alright, that's about all we can do for um, an even, a function that has an even degree. So hopefully you note the difference between even and odd. Alright, let's go ahead and look at one more graph. All right, this one, this is a function with an odd degree. And functions that have an odd degree have this basic shape. Notice that it's always going to go forever down. It's always going to go forever up. So um, that's why our range, we don't have to worry about knowing exactly what the equation is. Our range is always going to be all real numbers. We'll get to that in a minute. OK, so A. Where is h of 0? So remember that since it is inside the parentheses, that means my x-coordinate is 0. So we are looking right here. h of 0 equals negative 2. OK, for b, we want to estimate the values of x for which h of x equals negative 2. So that means my y is negative 2. We are looking along this line right here. So we have 1 at negative 3 and also 0. All right, our domain, again, you can either look at the graph or you can use the fact that this is a polynomial. Our domain, since it is a polynomial, is going to be negative infinity to infinity. Again, with polynomial functions, this is going to go forever to the left, and this goes forever to the right. Our range, because this is an odd degree polynomial, this is negative infinity to infinity. Again, it's going to go forever down, and it's going to go forever up. All right, our vertical intercept. Remember, we look for where it intersects the vertical axis, or the y-axis. We have it right here. And as it's asking for an intercept, we do want it in point form. So this is going to be 0, negative 2. 
To determine the zeros, we want to know where is it equal to zero or what are the x-intercepts. And we just want the x-coordinates. So we have negative 2 and 1. All right, so that takes care of our graphs. So now let's go ahead and look at some equations. All right, so remember that the first thing that we can do is we can evaluate a function. Remember that since we have our number inside parentheses, this is an x value. So we're going to replace all of our x's with zeros. So I'm going to come down below and write out my problem. We get g of 0 equals 0 cubed minus 2 times 0 plus 3 times 0 minus 5. So we just replace all of our x's with zeros. Now if we go ahead and simplify 0 cubed is 0, negative 2 times 0 is 0, 3 times 0 is 0, and we are left with negative 5. And we're done. All right, let's try one more. Let's try g of negative 1. So again, I'm going to replace all of my x's with negative 1's. We get negative 1 cubed minus 2 times negative 1 squared plus 3 times negative 1 minus 5. So we're going to start with our exponents. Negative 1 cubed. It's an odd exponent. We keep our negative. We get minus 2 times negative 1 squared. Since it's an even exponent, it will become positive. And those are all my exponents. All right, if we go ahead and multiply now, we get negative 1 minus 2 times 1 is 2. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. And we bring down our minus 5. Okay, if we go ahead and combine these, note that all of these are negative numbers, so we're going to add the numbers. We get 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 3 is 6, plus 5 is 11, and we keep the sign. So g of negative 1 is negative 11. Okay, so there's some evaluate. So now let's do domain and range. Again, this is a polynomial function. So my domain is all real numbers or negative infinity to positive infinity. For our range, this one we don't have to do any work. This is an x cubed. That is my leading coefficient. That's my leading term. Remember, leading term is the one with the largest exponent. And since this is an odd exponent, my range is also negative infinity to infinity. All right, a couple more examples. Number three, the first thing we want to do is determine the zeros of the function. So remember, zeros of the function means where is this equal to zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace f of x with zero. And solve. So we're going to go ahead and factor. x squared breaks down to x and x. 8 breaks down to 4 and 2. 
we have same signs in order to multiply to positive 8, and we have both are negative. Next step, we want to go ahead and set each factor equal to 0. and solve. So the first one we can add 4 to both sides. We get x equals 4. Second one I can add 2 to both sides and I get x equals 2. So my zeros are 4 comma 2. Okay, for B, it says, determine the values of A for which f of A equals 3. So one of the things uh, we want to be careful on is we're replacing x with A. And then we also have our function definition here. So what we have is, first off, I'm just going to do f of A. I'm going to replace all of my x's with a's. And the second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to replace f of a with 3. So we get 3 equals a squared minus 6a plus 8. Okay, we have a polynomial equation. So before we can do anything, we do want to have it set equal to 0. I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. We get 0 equals a squared minus 6a plus 5. We can factor. a squared is a and a. Things that multiply to 5 are 1 and 5, and they do combine to 6. We do have same signs in order to multiply to positive 5, and both are negative. Last step, we want to set each factor equal to 0. and solve each little equation. So for the first one, we're going to add 1 to both sides. We get a equals 1. Second one, we, we add 5 to both sides. And we get a equals 5. So a equals 1 or 5. All right. Last problem is similar to this. Alright, part A, we want to evaluate g of 4. 4 is inside the parentheses. So I want to replace all of my x's with 4. We get g of 4 equals 3 times 4 squared minus 11 times 4. We do our exponent. 4 squared is 16. We multiply. 3 times 16 is 48. 11 times 4 is 44. And 48 minus 44 is 4. So we get g of 4 equals 4. Remember, do not divide by 4 to get g by itself. This is function notation. This is not g times 4. Our final answer is just g of 4 equals 4. All right, part b. Same thing, I want to determine the values of a, for which g of a equals negative 10. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to replace my x's with a's. 
we get 3a squared minus 11a. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to replace my g of a with negative 10. And then we want to solve. So we need to start by setting it equal to 0. We want to get everything on one side. So I'm going to add 10 to both sides. We get 0 equals 3a squared minus 11a plus 10. All right, we want to factor. All right, if we go ahead and factor this, 3a squared is 3a and a. I want things that multiply to 10, so we get 1 and 10, 2 and 5. 1 and 10, I don't think it's going to be 1 and 10. I consider 11 to be a pretty small number. Uh, we're wanting to add to 11. So I'm going to go with my 2 and 5. So what would I rather multiply 3 by? Would I rather multiply it by the 2 or the 5? Well, if I multiply 3 times 5, that gets me to 15, and I'm not going to be able to add to 11. So I want to multiply by 2. That means 2 goes in the second set, and 5 goes in the first set. We do have same signs in order to multiply to positive 10, and both are negative. All right, we set each factor equal to 0. And we solve. In the first one, I can add 5 to both sides. and then divide by 3. We get a equals 5 thirds. Second one, I can add 2 to both sides, and we get a equals 2. So my solutions are 5 thirds and 2. All right, that finishes up polynomial functions and that finishes up the whole module on polynomials. So go ahead, finish off the homework. If you have any questions, please contact me and I will see you again when we get into module C.